All right, it's great that you're all exercising your free speech, and you do when you ring in and say things, and uh, within uh, certain very, very broad parameters, that's what the platform is all about. And as you know, free speech is a big thing for us. We talk about it a lot, and we like to think that we defend free speech fiercely here at the platform. And quite often we end up speaking to an organisation that does the same thing and I think does a terrific job, the Free Speech Union, who on Thursday are going to premiere a movie about free speech in New Zealand. And one of the people who's produced, made, put it together is Dane Giroux. And he joins us on the line now. Dane, nice to uh, talk to you. I understand there was a late recut of the movie. Uh, a late recut of the movie? Uh, it's, look, I've been working around the clock on uh, <laughs> this thing. So many things have happened. You know, misspelt names and all sorts of things that, that, that happen that you have to go back and forward and, and get everything sorted out. But uh, there's been a few late cuts, yeah. Okay, um, what's it called, Dane? Uh, it's called Last Words, which mm-hmm. is suitably dramatic. Yeah, and uh, you know, and, and and we are we are looking at because it was shot late last year, so it's become almost like a um, uh, just a, mo- a moment in time mm. talking about uh, the you know the, we we're following a writer Jacob Mishingama when he was here, and, and we had him on the show. We had a really good chat with him. Great guy. He had a fan- he did a fantastic interview uh, on your show. A fantastic interview on your show. Um, uh, you know, and he's the author of uh, Free Speech, a uh, history from social media, oh, Socrates to social media. Um, so we brought him here for a tour, and uh, we just had the cameras running the whole time, really. And, yeah. um, uh, and just, just caught him, you know, talking to all sorts of different people. But this was just in the run-up. Not, it was only about two weeks afterwards that, uh, that the Minister of Justice, Kitty Tapu Allen, announced that you know, the initial round of pullbacks from, from the, yeah. the, the the reforms. I think there were six reforms for hate speech laws originally that they were proposing. Yeah. And then they we had Chippy one. and the dumpster fire through the last one while well, kind of kind of put it on hold or put it on the back burner, didn't he? Yeah, which I find really fascinating, to be honest. Like, uh, my, my personal view, not the view of the union necessarily, but my, my own view is that he probably could have got away with that one, you know? Mm. Um, he'd pulled back five of them, so, he, you know, he could always point to that and say, look, guys, we did, this is a, it's still a massive walk back, but um, but didn't do it. And But I even picked it up in, in the Nation interview that uh, Kitty Tapu Allen did, you know, announcing the, the initial pullback that, that uh, she was she proposed. Uh, she, she seemed to be quoting a lot of the literature that, that she, she sounded like us. <laughs> I, yeah. I think she's been opening our emails. I really do, because she did, you know, make some of the arguments that, that, that we made that, you know, get this wrong, and it's a provocation Yeah. Uh, yeah. To, to a lot of the people that you think you're, you know, you're dealing with. It's not necessarily, well, it's not a solution at all. Yeah. And um, so, yeah. yeah. Dane, do you think that most New Zealanders care or know the many threats to their freedom of speech and the many attacks on their freedom of speech that have been launched, particularly in the term of this government? I, I tend to think they do. And my read on it was that, uh, I mean, Jacinda Ardern, I think it's a tra- a, a, she's a tragic story for me because... <laughs> She obviously had a whole, uh, you know, she, she's a, a, a great politician on so many levels. She was a great communicator when she came out. She had so many natural talents. But has any, maybe Longy is the other one that had so much political capital that really got, just got burnt up and wasted. Yeah. And I think a lot of it had to do with, um, with all these illiberal policies that just weren't really helping anyone well, anyone really? I mean, they were just no one got on on the bottom rung, and, and it just uh, she got to a position, I think, where it was like, well, well, what was this all for? Why was any of this necessary? And, yeah. and so, so I think her exiting was a part of New Zealanders looking at this and um, and, and saying, you know, we these are liberal policies are just we don't want them. Yeah. Yeah. And the other thing which I find interesting, Sean, and, and this was a discovery 
making the documentary because the interesting thing about following a guy like Jacob is he's not a New Zealander, he's an outsider. Yeah. And what's so great about using an outsider as your narrative device is that they teach you about you because yeah. they're seeing everything afresh, you know? Yeah. Like, so you really do get a perspective that you, uh, that it's sort of right in front of your eyes, but you mm. don't see it, you know, because you're living here and stuff. But he, he started, he, he was blown away by, by the culture of free speech in New Zealand. And see, I would have thought, uh, and maybe this is a stereotype that some of us get um, mm. pulled into, but you know, the whole passionless people idea. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I thought, well, we... So he says we do have a culture of free speech and open speaking. Well, yeah. Well, well you know, as... I mean, there's only been about... There's only been one conviction for, for hate speech laws in, yeah. in New Zealand history, I think. Um, uh, he's from Denmark, which is one of the more permissible yeah. um, uh, countries in Europe, but they've got well over... Well, they'd have, they'd have well over 100 convictions or even more on the books. Yeah. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it, and even talking to organizations like, you know, we filmed him going into the uh, Department of Internal Affairs and stuff, and he came out, you know, very sunny about yeah. um, their approach to it. Yeah. Uh, because in the, in the European Union, they, they'll just <laughs> they'll yeah. claim to have anything. Did they he have care, a look, you know? or does the documentary, and I'm going to see if I can get along on Thursday night uh, and see you on yeah. Thursday, Dane. It'd be great uh, to see you. Um, did he look at the disinformation project and where the threats to free speech are? Uh, and that the, the, trend. Yeah, the disinformation project. Well, we'll see the problem we the problem we had with a documentary like this is that you know so few of the people that are in the pro censorship camp want to talk. Yeah. You know. Uh, so it, and you know this. Yeah. So, so it, it just makes it very hard to get their side of the story. Now, I ultimately think that that was a pretty fatal strategy that they pursued because New Zealanders want the discussion. They want the debate, yeah. and they weren't getting it, and that just made them very suspicious, and yeah. and I think it really played against them. But Abdur Razak Khan from the um, Federation of um, uh, oh, I've Islamic forgotten it. Associations, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's right. He fronted up. And, yeah. and we did a great interview. Yeah, we're Jacob hoping to talk to him. him. We're hoping to talk to him this week. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, fantastic. You know, it got a little fiery at times as well, that mm. interview. But, you know, he fronted up. Mm. Yeah, you and know, that's he great. Up. He, yeah, yeah, it is great. He made yeah. his case and everything. And the others could have done that. So, you know, we, we were never going to get <laughs> the disinformation project. They don't talk to anyone because, I mean, because Jacob would. Well, know, no, because uh, apparently would, they feel so threatened that it's not a safe space for them, Dane. They have yeah. to wash their hands and have a shower if someone disagrees well, <laughs> with them. <laughs> yeah, well, he, no, probably, uh, the, yeah, he would have wiped the floor with them. But, um, yeah. but, but they, do, they do come up. They do come up in, yeah. Um, yeah. in, in discussion and so forth. I mean, that, that, yeah. they, they sort of uh, are, are placing everything, all the emphasis on, on polarisation on words. Mm. They're not looking at any of the underlying... Um, factors that may play into that, mm. you know, I mean, polarisation often is about inequality, it's about um, not being listened to, Yeah. And, and, and their solution seems to be, well, let's not listen to these people harder. Yeah. So I don't know. How and and I don't think the battle with the rolling back of this legislation, the battle is not over, and that culture of, I mean, we look at Rotorua City Council, I know uh, Free Speech Union involved in that, a, a mm. uh, some sort of prohibition on upsetting submissions to council and that they'll be vetted to see whether or not they're acceptable. Um, we had uh, the Sport Northland uh, ban on a problematic, uh, they thought, public meeting, which I, I think you guys and with a little bit of help from the platform man managed to get overturned. The battle for free speech is ongoing, isn't it? The battle for free speech is ongoing. Uh, I mean, there are cultural issues, you know, because there's a faction of people in power. It's not about the people necessarily, but the people in power that do want to sort of um, just make life a lot easier for themselves when they, as they govern. You know, they just don't want a lot of roadblocks in the way, and they see yeah. free speech and, and democracy, really, and at times, uh, as a bit of a roadblock to them yeah. just 
having a bit, bit of a cushy ride when, when they're in power. Um, mm. But but in terms of the hate speech laws, uh, I, I, I you know I know some of our supporters that have said, hey, you know, it's, it's premature to pop the corks, but I I don't know about that. I think that Jacinda Ardern had so much political capital. Mm. If is, is a leader like her going to come along? In, in the next uh, 10, 15 years, I mean, that, that would be a big call to predict that. So, uh, you well, know. Well, I'm any... just going to say the academics, the idiot academics who would quash our free speech. Um, Rebecca Kitteridge is still in the public service. She who published the SIS's guide to how to know if your braided hair kid is a terrorist. I'd say all those people are still in public life and that's why we have to be wary. Dane, the movie itself, how is it being released? I know you're having the premiere and I presume there are still tickets online at uh, 7 o'clock at the Penthouse Cinema Cinema in Wellington on on Thursday night. Where else can people see the movie? Last words. Well, if you go to Eventbrite and look up Free Speech Union or Last Words, you'll see that we're going countrywide. Um, Now, I hope... Uh, I mean, obviously, this this pales compared to some of the damage that's been done with the cyclone. But um, hopefully, uh, things will have cleared up a little. And then, and, and I mean, even for tomorrow, I'm probably going to have to look for a kayak at some point today. To there's a little blockage between Levin, so I got to yeah. <laughs> work out how to get down. But um, uh, you know, no country countrywide. Uh, if you go to the Eventbrite uh, website. And uh, type in Free Speech Union, and uh, yeah. you'll see fact, that. Willie's yeah, just sent me a text. Sean, we are unable to go tomorrow night. Is there going to be another showing of the documentary in Wellington? Uh, Dane. In Wellington, I'm not sure at this stage. Okay. I mean, if, by, by popular demand, of course there yeah. would be. But Are um, you going to put it out on the interweb, or on like YouTube or anything eventually? Yeah, no, no, we are. It, it, it's going to be available to... to um, uh, everyone at some point. Okay, so, and can you know, I just say to, we we'll might talk about this on Thursday over lunch if I can make it. Um, sure. We're more than happy to host a link on the platform to the movie. Fantastic. And no, give it a push. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Dane, thank you so much. Um, and and I look forward to seeing you. And I, I would recommend last words to everyone as a snapshot of the free, very important free speech debate uh, in this country. Uh, Dane, thanks for made it, making it and thanks for coming on today. Thank you. Cheers. Dane Giroux, Free Speech Union, uh, one of the producers, creators of a movie called Last Words on the free speech debate in New Zealand. Uh, Premiering, um, go to Eventbrite to find out where it's on. It's premiering at the Penthouse Cinema at 7 o'clock on Thursday night. Um, And good on them. Good on them for making it.